Hello. In the previous video you learned the different approaches used for forecasting which are quantitative and qualitative forecasts. Here, I will describe the various approaches to the analysis of time series data. Before turning to those discussions, one point should be emphasized. A demand forecast should be based on a time series of past demand rather than unit sales. Sales would not truly reflect demand if one or more stockouts occurred. Now let us start learning how to calculate the forecast. The first technique we will study is called naive method. A simple but widely used approach to forecasting is the naive approach. A naive forecast uses a single previous value of a time series as the basis of a forecast. The naive approach can be used with a stable series of variations around an average, with seasonal variations, or with trend. With a stable series, the last data point becomes the forecast for the next period. Thus, if demand for a product last week was 20 cases, the forecast for this week is 20 cases. With seasonal variations, the forecast for this season is equal to the value of the series last season. For example, the forecast of the number of checks cashed at a bank on the first day of the month next month is equal to the number of checks cashed on the first day of this month. For data with trend, the forecast is equal to the last value of the series plus or minus the difference between the last two values of the series. For example, Suppose the last two values were 237 and 243. The difference between them is 6. So, the next forecast would be 243 plus 6 equal 249. Although at first look the naive approach may appear too simplistic, it is nonetheless a legitimate forecasting tool. Consider the advantages, it has virtually no cost, it is quick and easy to prepare and it is easily understandable. The main objection to this method is its inability to provide highly accurate forecasts. However, if resulting accuracy is acceptable, this approach deserves serious consideration. Moreover, even if other forecasting techniques offer better accuracy, they will almost always involve a greater cost. The accuracy of a naive forecast can serve as a standard of comparison against which to judge the cost and accuracy of other techniques. Thus, managers must answer the question, is the increased accuracy of another method worth the additional resources required to achieve that accuracy? The second group of techniques is the techniques of averaging. They are used when the historical data contain a certain amount of random variation that tends to vague systematic movements in the data. This randomness arises from the combined influence of many relatively unimportant factors, and it cannot be reliably predicted. Averaging techniques smooth variations in the data. Averaging techniques generate forecasts that reflect recent values of a time series. These techniques work best when a series tends to vary around an average. Three techniques for averaging are described which are Moving Average Weighted Moving Average and Exponential Smoothing One weakness of the naive method is that the forecast just traces the actual data, with a lag of one period, it does not smooth at all. But by expanding the amount of historical data a forecast is based on, this difficulty can be overcome. A moving average forecast uses a number of the most recent actual data values in generating a forecast. The moving average forecast can be computed using the following equation. FT equals summation of A T minus I divided by N. Where FT is the forecast for time period T. A t minus i is the actual value in period t minus i. And n is the number of periods in the moving average. Example for the moving average. Compute the forecast for period 6 using the 3 period moving average method given demand for cell phone for the last 5 periods. The last 3 periods are period numbers 3, 4 and 5. And the corresponding demands are 43. 40 and 41. The average of these three numbers is the forecast for period 6. 
So, the forecast for period 6, F6, is 41 cell phone. If actual demand in period 6 turns out to be 38, the 3 period moving average forecast for period 7 would be the average of the demands of periods 4, 5 and 6. That is 40. Note that in a moving average, as each new actual value becomes available, the forecast is updated by adding the newest value and dropping the oldest and then recomputing the average. Consequently, the forecast moves by reflecting only the most recent values. The advantages of a moving average forecast are that it is easy to compute and easy to understand. A possible disadvantage is that all values in the average are weighted equally. For instance, in a 10 period moving average, each value has a weight of 1 tenth. Hence, the oldest value has the same weight as the most recent value. If a change occurs in the series, a moving average forecast can be slow to react, especially if there are a large number of values in the average. To overcome such disadvantage, the weighted moving average is used. A weighted average is similar to a moving average, except that the most recent values in a time series is assigned more weight. For instance, the most recent value might be assigned a weight of 0.5 the next most recent value a weight of 0.3, and the next after that a weight of 0.2. Note that the weights must sum to 1. The weighted average forecast is calculated using this equation. Ft e equals Wt multiplied by At plus Wt minus 1 multiplied by At minus 1 plus Wt minus n multiplied by At minus n. Where? Wt is the weight for the period T, Wt minus 1 is the weight for period T minus 1, etc. A T is the actual value in period T, a T minus 1 is the actual value for period T minus 1, etc. Example for calculating the weighted average forecast. For the given data, compute a weighted average forecast for period 6 using a weight of 0.4 for the most recent period, 0.3 for the next most recent, 0.2 for the next, and 0.1 for the next. So using the previous equation, F6 equals W5A5 plus W4A4 plus W3A3 plus W2A2. So, F6 equals 0.4 multiplied by 239 plus 0.3 multiplied by 242 plus 0.2 multiplied by 240 plus 0.1 multiplied by 238, which equals to 240. So the forecasted demand for period 6 using the weighted average equals 240. The advantage of a weighted average over a simple moving average is that the weighted average is more reflective of the most recent occurrences. However, the choice of weights is somewhat arbitrary and generally involves the use of trial and error to find a suitable weighting scheme. The third technique of averaging is the exponential smoothing. Exponential smoothing is a sophisticated weighted averaging method that is still relatively easy to use and understand. Each new forecast is based on the previous forecast plus a percentage of the difference between that forecast and the actual value of the series at that point. That is, next forecast equals previous forecast plus alpha multiplied by actual demand minus previous forecast. Where, actual demand minus previous forecast represents the forecast error and alpha is a percentage of the error. More concisely, Ft e equals Ft minus 1 plus alpha multiplied by a t minus 1 minus Ft minus 1, where Ft is the forecast for period t. Ft minus 1 is the forecast for the previous period, that is, period t minus 1. Alpha is the smoothing constant, percentage. A T minus 1 is the actual demand or sales for the previous period. The smoothing constant alpha represents a percentage of the forecast error. Commonly used values of alpha range from 0.05 to 
Low values of alpha are used when the underlying average tends to be stable. Higher values are used when the underlying average is susceptible to change. Here is an example for the smoothing average. Suppose the previous forecast was 352 units, actual demand was 365 units, and alpha equals 0 0.2. The new forecast would be computed as follows. FT equals 352 plus 0 0.2 multiplied by 365 minus 352 equal 354.6 which approximately equal to 355 units. Exponential smoothing should begin several periods back to enable forecasts to adjust to the data, instead of starting one period back. A number of different approaches can be used to obtain a starting forecast, such as naive approaching the average of the first several periods. In this video naive and averaging techniques were explained as examples for the quantitative forecasting approach. The next video describes some other forecasting methods. So, keep following us and do not forget to subscribe to be notified with the new videos. Goodbye.